hello everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Alok. I'm currently a software engineer at Apple. I'm currently working on the data platform org. Uh, I'm also a Trino contributor. In this uh, lightning talk, we are going to talk about enhancing data governance in Trino with open lineage integration. Here is the agenda for this talk. We are going to talk about what is data lineage, uh, why do we need data lineage, and then we are going to talk about what is open lineage, and then uh, we are going to show how uh, open lineage is integrated in Trino. We are going to close it with a quick demo at the end. So what is data lineage? Uh, data lineage uh, is a process uh, which uh, tracks uh, the data as it uh, moves from your source to a destination. Uh, it captures things like how your data came, uh, how is it getting transformed, and where it is eventually going. Uh, you can think of it as a map that documents the entire life cycle of the data as it moves from one place to other place, going through multiple uh, uh, data transformations via different uh, engines. Why do we need data lineage? So data lineage is quite crucial for data governance because it helps answer some of these questions. Uh, one key question it answers is data freshness. I'm pretty sure you uh, might have come across scenarios where you're looking at a dashboard, you're trying to find out whether the data there is stale or it is uh, fresh. So without any knowledge about the lineage, it's very uh, hard to track whether the data that you are looking is fresh or not. Uh, troubleshooting data quality issues also is quite challenging uh, without data lineage because oftentimes you need to trace back and see how the dat data landed and whether there are any quality issues with respect to the data. For example, a bunch of null values got added and you're trying to debug what went wrong. It also helps in terms of uh, doing end-to-end -end impact analysis. Uh, for example, you as a data owner are trying to uh, debug if, let's say, uh, I am modifying this table, what are the data sets that are going to get impacted, what are the data pipelines that are going to break because of this. So having this uh, data lineage uh, is going to help you in terms of doing end-to-end -end impact analysis. Uh, security and compliance are pretty uh, key initiatives nowadays. And then without data lineage, uh, it's very difficult to track and make sure that your data is following the compliance standards. Uh, for example, take, a, uh, take, take an exa example of like uh, PII data, right? How, how do you know that your PII, PII data is getting leaked, right? So without data lineage, it is pretty hard to do that. Now, although we have some data tools which have uh, lineage built in, for example, Airflow has a concept of this DAG uh, graph, and then DBT also has uh, something built in. Uh, tracking the lineage across the platform is a difficult problem because you have to take one system's lineage, ingest it into another system, and then try to find out the end-to-end -end lineage across the platforms. So what do we need? We need some sort of open standard uh, that helps uh, define the lineage uh, in a much more interoperable way so that one system's lineage is well understood by the other system. That's where open lineage comes in. Open lineage is an open standard for the collection of lineage metadata from the jobs as it is happening. The keyword is as it is happening because we want to capture the lineage while the event is happening, while the data is in transit. Capturing it after the event has happened is very, uh, very difficult because you want to re-ingest the uh, data and then try to figure out what went wrong and then that also has additional infra cost. Open lineage uh, standard defines a generic model uh, for data sets, jobs, and run entities. It is also highly extensible with the help of facets. Now let's take a deep look at the open lineage data model. So every time there is a data transition, uh, it is going to emit a run state update event. Uh, it, it consists of uh, several building blocks. There is a run entity, there is a job entity, and there is a data set entity. Job is a abstraction on top of the process which is producing or consuming the data sets. 
and then uh, think of job like a, a, a Spark job, it can be uh, Airflow DAG, or it can be in the context of Prino, a SQL query doing the data mutation. A run is a particular entity, uh, uh, is a particular instance of the job uh, with a unique identifier. If you think of job as a class, run is basically an object of that class with a particular unique uh, identifier. Data set is an abstraction of your data. In the context of Trino, it could be a table or it could be a view. Now each of these uh, uh, providers can be further enhanced with the help of facets. Facets are kind of your additional metadata around these uh, building blocks. For example, in the Trino Open Lineage integration, uh, we are taking uh, the advantage of SQL job facet, which is an inbuilt job facet given by the Open Lineage library to describe the SQL query that was run. Now take a look at uh, uh, the Open Lineage uh, ecosystem that we have in our data platform. On the top, we have uh, multiple uh, processing engines, including Trino, Spark, Flink, uh, Airflow. There are some ad hoc pipelines as well, uh, machine learning use cases or cron jobs, uh, which are also emitting the Open Lineage compliant events. We have a in-house uh, Lineage platform, which is fully Open Lineage compliant. There are a few building blocks there. There is a highly available lineage ingestion API, uh, which is used by all the producers to uh, submit the open lineage events. Once the event land, uh, they get transformed to uh, uh, highly optimized lineage storage, uh, which is easier to fetch. Uh, then there is a, a interactive lineage UI, which lets uh, user explore their data sets and their jobs and the relationships in between them uh, in an interactive fashion. There is also a query API, which lets uh, users uh, or systems query the lineage by their identities. Uh, this is much more helpful for further integration down the line. Now, if you see the providers, the Open Lineage Trino integration was recently added, and here is the PR that added it. Uh, uh, the initiative started uh, uh, internally, and then we wanted to open source it as well. That's when this PR came, and we collaborated with the authors to get uh, a uh, lot of customization added into the uh, into the PR in terms of review. Now let's take a deep look at how the Trino Open Linux plugin is uh, implemented. So as most of you are aware, uh, Trino has this service provider interface which lets you write custom event listeners. And a uh, good thing about this custom event listeners are that it gives you a hook around the query created events or query completed events. So we are leveraging those two events and we are translating the uh, events to a corresponding open lineage event type. Here is a mapping. For example, when the query is created, we are taking that query context and then trying to convert it to a open lineage stat event. Similarly, once the query is completed, uh, we take all that context and then convert it to a query uh, uh, open lineage complete event. And if the query fails, it is going as a open lineage fail event. Along with all these event types, uh, there are like additional contextual information that is passed, for example, the input and output data sets, uh, processing engine versions, and few additional runtime facets. Let's take a deep look at one of the example. On the bottom right, we have a sample Trino CETA query, uh, which is uh, selecting a date with a particular uh, range and then dumping it to a table. So once the CETA query is completed, there is going to be a corresponding open in this complete event. And here is how the spec would look like. On the top, we have a event time that uh, uh, makes sure that when the query was run, and then there is an event type which says uh, what kind of open lineage event it is. In this case, it is a complete event because query completed successfully. A run ID is a unique identifier that is generated from the query ID. And then there are this bunch of custom run facets which explains like the query plan, query statistics, uh, processing engine versions, and some of the uh, run facets we have internally as well for uh, adding further context about our uh, platform. Now take a look at the job entity. A uh, job entity has a unique name. In this case, the name is uh, the Trino query ID. Uh, the namespace is customizable as well. Uh, you can use your uh, platform or team or project's name there. Uh, similarly, job has further facets to describe. Uh, there is a query job type, and there is a SQL job facet. 
Both of these are inbuilt facets given by open lineage. The SQL job facet is used to describe uh, the Trino query that was run. Looking at the data sets uh, uh, entity, there are uh, both input data set as well as output data set. The namespace uh, uh, is compliant with a standard that Open Lineage uh, provides. Usually it is your engine type, in this case it is Trino, followed by a host and port or a FQDN. Uh, name is a pretty standard data source naming convention that Trino uses, which is a catalog schema table. And then there are the schema data set facets, which is used to further describe the metadata about the schema of the table. For example, what is the column description, column name, column data types, all that thing. Same goes for output data set as well. Uh, along with the metadata uh, or the schema, there is further uh, 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 details about the column lineage with the help of another inbuilt facet called column lineage data set facet that is used to map the input data sets column to a output data sets column. Now that we have seen the schema end to end, let's uh, see this live. I'm going to quickly switch to a demo mode. All right. So I have a standalone Trino server running uh, in the development mode and I have the open lineage event listener uh, that is already uh, hooked in. So some of the customizations that we have given here if you see the event listener type is called open lineage and my Trino FQDN is uh, specified here and uh, this uh, namespace is customizable as well. We're just giving data platform Trino and then uh, for submitting the events, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, open source uh, lineage platform uh, Markage uh, to demonstrate how the lineage looks like. So I have started the uh, dockerized container for Marques and I have my Trino running. Let's uh, see that quickly. We have the Trino cluster running and here is the Marques endpoint. Right now there is no data sets, no, uh, uh, no jobs registered yet. So we are going to run some sample C test queries and then see how the lineage appears in the Marques UI. Let me switch to my dbweaver. So I have my Trino server running with uh, uh, TPCH and uh, memory connectors. We are going to use that to demonstrate the data lineage by doing some sample C test queries from uh, one TPCH table and copying it over to a memory uh, connector. So let's uh, see that real quick. We create a TPCH analytics uh, uh, table, uh, sorry, schema. All right, the schema got created. Let me switch to the schema. Now we are going to create two sample tables called customers and orders. These are going to be copied from the TPCH. All right, the customer table got created and then the orders table all right, let's see them real quick, whether the tables got created. Yes. Let's do some select. All right. So now we are going to do a sample C test uh, for customers and orders by doing a join and uh, looking at the data for a particular year, uh, which is 97. Let's run this C test query. All right, so let's also verify the data has arrived in the memory connector. Here it is. We are also going to further add few records to the table that we just created. These are like ad hoc uh, data points that we are inserting. All right, so now that we have inserted a bunch of uh, records and done a lot of uh, mutation queries, Let's see how it appears in the linear UI. So here is my Trino. Uh, if you see all these queries that we ran, they are all appearing here. Now let me switch to the markage uh, where we'll uh, see all the lineage. Let's select the namespace. If you just do a refresh, the namespace will appear. 
So this is the namespace that we have customized in the event listener. Now let's look at the sample lineage. If you remember the data model that we have, uh, it basically takes the query ID as the job name. So here is how the query uh, ID appears in the job name. Let's open one of the sample one. So there it is. Here is the end-to-end -end lineage. Uh, as you can see, we copied a sample table from uh, TPCH uh, using the job here. And uh, there are some details mentioned here. And that is moved to memory uh, connector. Same thing for customers as well, which is moved to memory connector. Now the third query that we ran, which did a join across the customer and orders to create a customer orders table for a particular year. So this, this is how it is captured end to end. And all of this is happening uh, because of the standard open lineage event that is being published to the Marquez endpoint. Now if you look at the data sets view and then switch to the data sets uh, name, there is a, a column lineage that is captured as well. Let's take a look at the customer orders table that we just created. And here is how the column lineage is captured. So we have customers, uh, uh, TPCH customers at one end, and then it goes through memory, and then it is eventually joined across an orders table. And this is how the end-to-end -end column lineage is captured. Now having this wealth of information is pretty crucial because uh, if you want to track something going wrong, this is how you basically see the end-to-end -end lineage and then try to figure out where the data might be going wrong. So it is quite helpful. That's all I have from the demo. Let me switch back to my presentation. We'd like to thank all the reviewers and the collaborators on this PR for getting this open lineage PR added. Uh, there are some future work that we have planned. Uh, right now, the open lineage event listener is purely HTTP based. We want to also enhance it so that it can be uh, based, uh, based on a Kafka sync, which is what most of the open lineage listeners are implemented, like Flink uh, and others. So we are planning to uh, contribute that uh, further. There are a few other items re uh, regarding uh, adding extra uh, JMX metrics around the open lineage that we plan to contribute as well. That's all I have. Uh, thank you, and uh, would like to take any questions if you have. Any questions in the room? Any questions? Oh, look. Also, for note, the PR is already merged. So, if you are lucky enough to use one of the latest releases, you can actually already use it, and you can send PRs to improve it, just like they have already done. <laughs> I had a question on the uh, transformations that you said. Um, is there a way to filter out transformations that may not be material to a specific element? So there is a bit of customization that we have added in terms of uh, what kind of query types that are allowed. But like you mentioned, uh, there is certainly some scope to also add some fil filtering criteria. And the event listener is quite uh, uh, customizable, so we can do that as well. Right now it is not there, but it can be extended to solve that use case. A question from the online chat. Yeah. Uh, can open lineage track the transformations applied on a column level? I just sort the column lineage, uh, but uh, the transformations that are happening on the column level, I'm not entirely sure what he meant. We'll have Laura. Yeah, I think the alter column types, that is also allowed, that will be captured as well. Are there any plans to add a Trino uh, connector so that uh, Trino can read the data out of open lineage? The UI looks great, but it would also be great to be able to uh, query it. Yeah, I think there are multiple consumers. Like I mentioned, Marquez is one of the consumer. But uh, if there is a uh, wide interest to have so, so, some sort of like uh, connector to read from all these consumers, then that is certainly a possibility. 